the flickering on Tabby's star is caused by dust. Tabby's star flashes like a neon sign in the sky, and scientists now know why. Scientists say they now have an explanation for why Tabby's star flickers, space dust. KIC 8462852, the star's official name, is best known for its sudden drops in brightness. A team of 200 scientists now believe a cloud of dust particles is causing the star to appear to flicker. Researchers reported that Tabby star grew dimmer in blue wavelengths than in red ones between March 2016 and May 2017. They believe this is likely being caused by dust particles less than a micrometer in size. Now they just need to figure out where the dust comes from. Aliens? Look at the shiny objects! Neutron stars birth a kilonova. Feeling up for a fireworks show of galactic proportions, Tomo Sapiens? Then aren't you in for a treat? Millions of light years from the Milky Way, inside the Hydra constellation is an elliptical galaxy. It's here astronomers believe they detected both light and gravity from a kilonova event. That's cool, Tomo, but what the Kenobi are they? First detected in 2013, a kilonova is a class of supernova explosion resulting from two colliding neutron stars. The Space Telescope Science Institute says each neutron in this case was no wider than Washington, D.C. Typically, they're between 6 and 12 miles in diameter. The institute added that the stars in question weighed between 10% and 60% more than our sun. That's 4.18 nonillion pounds, 4.18 followed by 30 zeros multiplied by 1.1 and 1.6 times, respectively. It's the collision of two of these ultra-compact densities that astronomers believe emitted light and gravity strong enough to be observed on Earth. And that's a big deal, because it's the first time gravity and light have been spotted coming from the same cosmic event. What followed the kilonova is unknown. But NASA astrophysicist Eleonora Troya speculates the cosmic explosion may have formed a black hole. And inside that, Tomo sapiens, is what's generally referred to as the point of no return, a place beyond reality. The Voyager spacecraft are still reaching for the stars. In August and September 2017, NASA's Voyager 1 and 2 spacecraft will mark their 40th anniversaries as space explorers. The two spacecraft are still sending data back to Earth and setting space exploration milestones despite their vast distance from our planet. The Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 spacecraft were launched in 1977 to take advantage of an alignment of Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune that made it possible to use gravitational assists to explore the planets in a much shorter time. This alignment appears once every 175 years. Voyager 2 was launched earlier than Voyager 1. It is the only spacecraft to have conducted flybys of Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Voyager 1 took a shorter but faster trajectory that used a gravity assist maneuver at Saturn to take it out of the solar system. In 2012, Voyager 1 became the first spacecraft to cross into interstellar space. It is still transmitting data at a distance of almost 13 billion miles away from Earth. Voyager 2 is in the space known as the Heliosheath, almost 11 million miles from Earth. That spacecraft is expected to enter interstellar space in the next few years. Each spacecraft carries a gold-plated record of sounds, pictures, and messages about Earth, just in case some intelligent ETs find them someday. Question is, can it support life? Scientists using the European Southern Observatory's planet-hunting HARPS instrument have discovered a new exoplanet just 11 light-years from our solar system. Ross 128b is roughly the same size as Earth and is believed to share a similar surface temperature. The exoplanet's host star is Ross 128, a red dwarf star that is smaller and cooler than our Sun, is 20 times closer to its star than Earth is to the Sun, and completes an orbit in just 9.9 .9 days. Red dwarf stars such as the Proxima Centauri are unstable and often subject their planets to flares and deadly UV radiation. But Ross 128 is a much quieter star, which means its exoplanets may be a more comfortable place to host life. Scientists are unsure if Ross 128b is in fact habitable, but agree that it is a good candidate for the study. ESO's extremely large telescope is set to look for biomarkers such as oxygen in the exoplanet's atmosphere by 2025. 
A nearby star is emitting weird radio waves. A star close to our solar system was found last week to be playing some pretty weird jams on the radio. Well, not exactly. The Arecibo Observatory in Puerto Rico discovered peculiar radio signals coming from the star Ross 128 in the Virgo constellation. Scientists say the reason for this could be one of three things. The signals could have originated from a solar flare, from something else passing in front of the telescope's view of Ross 128, or it could simply be a radio burst from a high-orbit satellite. Researchers say the recurring hypothesis that aliens are behind the signal is at the bottom of many other explanations. So it's probably not ET or the Death Star, Spock or the Saiyans.